This is an old report, but recently, after watching the Better Bigfoot programs on TV, it dawned on me that what we had experienced was a Bigfoot. Every September, my husband and I would go hiking to see the color. This trip was in September of 1970 to Pikes Peak State Park, located on the highest bluff on the Mississippi River in Iowa. September is a time when the kids are back in school. There was only one other car in the parking lot, so the trails were deserted. Pikes Peak had several walking trails, and we had decided to take the longest, which led to the overlook on the Mississippi. We had hiked almost to the point of the overlook. Fall had us crunching on the fallen leaves when we heard a large thump, thump, thump from behind the trees, followed by a loud animal scream that we had never experienced before. Having hiked in the woods almost weekly, we learned to identify most of the animal sounds around us. This was not an identifiable animal. The screech scared us so badly that we immediately turned around and ran as fast as we could all the way back to the ranger station. Having reached the ranger station, we immediately inquired about the animal we had just encountered. We explained in great detail what had happened, but the rangers said that they had no clue what it had encountered and that nothing similar had ever been reported. To this day, I am still haunted by the sound of the footsteps and the screech. Until the Bigfoot programs, I had never considered that what we had encountered could be a Bigfoot. Now, I'm 90% sure of my identification. I saw a Bigfoot when my aunt, cousin, and parents were camping at our property. We had a fire blazing, and we kept hearing these strange noises, branches breaking, and thumps. After about an hour of this, I was wondering what might be lurking in the woods, so I went over to the area where I heard the noises to see what it was. I went about 10 yards from the fire, and all of a sudden, something about waist high ran very fast in front of me. To this day, I don't know what it was. I turned and about 9 feet away, I saw an 8 foot creature staring at me. I didn't get any facial details, I was too far away from the fire. I could tell that its head had a point on top. It stared at me for about 10 seconds, but I felt like it was 10 minutes. Then it did this slow turn away from me and walked off. I ran back into the cabin and I did not come out for the rest of the night. I did not tell anybody right away because I thought it might have been a trick being played on me, played by my cousins. Six months later, my parents and I found a 15 inch footprint alongside the pond at our property when we were fishing near the area of my sighting. We took pictures of the footprint and about two years after my sighting, my dad and I were camping at our land, the same area me and my dad heard a knock. The next day, I found a 20 inch footprint. I had a camera with me and I took pictures of that same footprint. I have no doubt that there is a Sasquatch that has been living around our property and I think it still might live there. Here is my written account of the four Bigfoot sightings I told you about. I will start by giving you a little background as to the year, area, and season. The year is about 1978, give or take a year or so. The area is between Adele and West Des Moines, Iowa, roughly following the Raccoon River. It is late fall in November. The story starts when a girlfriend of mine told me about a neighbor of hers, a farmer, who said that early on one morning, about 4 a.m., as he was making coffee, he noticed a big creature standing beneath his yard light. He described it as standing about seven feet tall and covered with black hair. He watched it for a while until it walked away. I didn't think much about it until a few days later when I heard on the news that a truck driver on I-80 of the vicinity of the Raccoon River saw, apparently, the same creature in his headlights. I was surprised when I heard this given the story from my girlfriend just a few days prior. As it happened, a few days after that I was talking to a friend of mine from high school about the same sightings, he began telling me too that he had seen the creature, almost he did not report it. He said that one evening during the same time period and in the same area, he went to a small cabin he'd built in the woods near the river. 
As he approached the structure, a tall creature with black hair jumped up and ran out the door. He assumed it had been sleeping on the floor in a pile of leaves. This building was not completed and there was no roof. It was just turning dark, so he didn't get a good look at it. But because he was so close there, there was no mistaking its size. He described it as about seven feet tall and covered with black hair. It scared him so much that he ran in the opposite direction. What happened next was truly amazing to me. A few days later, my brother who farms with me was driving a tractor home from the fields very late at night. It was around 11.30 p.m. with a full moon and just a dusting of snow on the ground. He stopped in a rural portion of West Des Moines and watched as two Bigfoot creatures walked calmly by the side of the road. They were about 100 yards away and walked parallel to the road beside a fence in an open area that has no trees. One of the creatures was taller, at about seven feet, and the second was about a foot shorter. He said they had long swinging arms, a short neck, black hair from head to toe, and they were not afraid of his presence, although he was some distance away. He reported to me that the next day he went back for another look and to his surprise discovered that the area where these creatures had been was covered with dense, short, prickly underbrush. There is no way a human could walk so freely in that area. It's just not possible. But there is more. The next right or so, as I was working in our farm, shop, late into the evening, I heard a sound that I'll never forget. I can best describe it as a long, loud, mournful cry or wail. I suppose it lasted five to 10 seconds, and I heard it twice. It was not a dog, coyote, fox, or owl. I know the sounds of these animals, and I've never heard a large cat wail before, but it was a bit until like that, I suppose. When I first heard it, I immediately noticed that our two dogs took off running for the barn. That I'd never seen before. Usually animal sounds are returned with loud barking. We live about three miles north of where my brother saw both creatures and my mother heard it too. I live in Greensville, Texas, north of town, just off of Highway 69 North. I have lived here for 12 years and have had strange things going on at my house since I moved here. But in the last two to three years, things have really started happening more. I live down a dirt road off of Highway 69. There are there are a lot of woods around me. Also, have several neighbors around me too. In late summer of 2017, I was jolted awake in the middle of the night by a loud banging on my house. I knew I wasn't dreaming because I shot straight up. And at that exact moment, my two little dogs flew off my bed, barking and carrying on. I stumbled into the kitchen, wondering what could be happening, and it was 2.38 a.m. My two big dogs outside were not barking, which I thought was odd. To make a long story short, I called the sheriff's department and two deputies came out, but found nothing. From that moment on, every two or three months, I have several incidents for a week or two, and then nothing for another month or two or three. Then things happen again. This past winter, from November of 2019 to February 2020, I have had several things happen. On three separate occasions while I have been propped in bed watching TV, I have heard a loud growl outside my bedroom, loud enough to hear it over the TV. It was loud and guttural. I have had tapping on the back of my house during the night. It is usually always around the same time of night. In January of 2020, I was once again propped up in bed watching TV, and over my TV, I heard something rubbing on the back of my house on where the wall to my bathroom is. My bedroom and bathroom run together, and my two little dogs jumped off the bed into the bathroom at the back wall barking. I've had rocks thrown at my house. I'm home alone most of the time, but this past Saturday night, April 18th, 2020, my husband just happened to be home. Between 11 and 11.30 p.m., my dog started barking and wouldn't stop so I got her to holler at her to hush. As I got my bedroom door open, my cat was lying in my rocking chair next to my door. 
I paused to let her out about the time. I heard that same loud guttural growl at my back door. My cat heard it, wheeled around and looked at the back door. I went and woke my husband up. He looked out the back door and saw nothing. I went to the front door and opened it and called my dog. She would not get close to the fence and was barking, looking towards the back of the house towards my neighbor's home behind us. All of a sudden, she jumped back like whatever it was coming towards her. I ran to my guest room to look out the window facing that direction and back towards northwest. I saw something huge and dark in color going across my neighbor's back pasture, moving fast. My neighbor behind me lives alone, and she has had the same things happening at her house. June 28th, 2006. I have early reported a Bigfoot sighting several years ago. This happened to be in Iowa, Decatur County, and so is this occurrence. If you have ever been at least a part-time sportsman and found yourself loving the nature around you, then you may know what I am speaking of. There are creatures and certain sounds that go along with any given area, sounds that birds and other familiar creatures will make. It wasn't until today, June 24, 2008, that I put it together. A sound was recognized by myself which I believe to be a Bigfoot. I will explain as best as I can. I returned to the parcel of land which I had my first visual experience of the creature. He sort of scared me off. I brought a friend with me to shoot some guns as it is a very safe place to do so. We hadn't put too many rounds down range into a steep vertical bank which is probably 50 foot high. We were less than 200 yards from the sighting location and I could hear two huge rocks being smacked together. It was no coincidence. I have heard this before while in the woods, but only at two locations. It was quite rhythmic, and the number of smacks were like always equaling four to six in the count. I even mentioned too that the man who was with me, but the noise had stopped by the time he heard me over his ear protection. I also had earplugs in, but had no problem hearing the sounds. I kind of think this rock smacking is to let all others of their kind know about humans are around. I'm also thinking that it's to give an all clear message as it is happening at a specific time each time. I also think that they use the calls of nature's wildlife to communicate, particularly that of a great horned owl and a crow. This is due to the frequency of time and occurrence which I can't quite explain. It is something you have to experience for yourself. I was an avid Indian artifact hunter. Service finds only though. I got out of college classes early that day and decided to give it a go in a creek I hadn't been over for some time. As I drove down into the area, I noticed a pickup parked with two gentlemen sitting on the tailgate in the shade from the hot sun. The truck was a Ford, two-tone in color, white over brown. I asked them if they were practicing as to where so I could stay out of their road. They said there was a special deer season open and they were tracking one. I walked to a different place than I had planned to hunt and told them where I would be. I walked over to the creek and started in. I guess I was into the area, maybe 50 yards, and the truck didn't waste any time spinning up the hill. They came north and one guy jumped out and the other guy drove on north and got out. I found this a little disturbing and decided they might be hunting me. I climbed out of the creek in short order and was about to walk back to my truck and leave. As I came over the bank, there was this creature sitting on the ground leaning against a tree. It could have been 12 feet tall if it was standing up. I was only 20 feet from this thing. It was an oaf looking creature sitting on its butt with its back against a large oak tree. It was sleeping with its hands and fingers locked together, stretched out across its knees. It was sleeping there with massive amounts of leaves and its very long brownish hair which covered it head to toe, including the face, and it didn't seem to matter what color or shade they were. The hair seemed to blend in perfectly. I'm wondering if its hair is hollow like a deer's hair. I honestly was completely shocked and all the hair on my body rose to attention. I recognized this thing from pics and magazines and such. 
I felt nauseous and confused. As I hopped back into the creek out of sight from it, it rose and bolted east right in the direction of those guys. I heard it cut across the gravel on the road, and that was it. It never went back to that creek. I took my son Miles fishing behind Sundown Mountain Ski Resort. We turned west off of Asbury Road onto Twin Springs Drive, where there is access to the stream. I had been promising my son some night fishing. We sat on a couple of buckets facing south to the rock outcropping and wooded area across the creek. We were fishing in the deeper water across the creek near the rocks. We heard sticks breaking and rustling, which I assumed were coons, as this is a good coon area. Then we noticed something larger coming toward the other side of the creek from a distance. Thinking that this was one of the many deer that we often see, thought nothing of it until we caught sight of it in the backlight of the city or moon from the other side of the hill that we were facing. This was a large bipedal animal, very unlikely to be a person. And this time of night without a light, although we were fishing without a light source also, it came up to the top of the rock outcropping direct across from us and stood between two trees. It then squatted down and just sat there watching us. My son was scared and I was intrigued. Within 10 minutes, another came to join the first to his right and stayed just across a ravine. No more than six minutes later, another came from the south, just to the left of the one squatting across from us. As this one got close, it let out a piercing shriek. Nothing like the calls that we had heard on TV shows. This was high pitched and frightening. The other two took notice and began to move toward the shrieking squatch. At this point, we had enough and grabbed our fishing gear and ran back to the truck. Around 7 a.m., let's say the first week of November of 2007, I was making a phone call to try and get some help on a very large roof that I was working on. Standing to the right of the house, facing the back, is a large, open, grassy field surrounded by woods. I was looking to the back staring at this particular tree that stood out to me, when suddenly, something very tall, very large, stepped away from the tree looking at me. My arm with the phone dropped, and my jaw dropped, and I was thinking to myself, what the hell is that? Its fur was brown to reddish brown, and it covered the entire body that I could see from the waist up. Just as quickly as I had seen it, it made its way across the field in a matter of seconds. I was on the phone, but I took note of where I was standing, and that was around me. Next to me were a couple of snowmobiles, and about five feet in front of me was a red quad and was on the far right corner of concrete pad. The grass was very high because the day before, I had noticed a couple of deer walking through the field, and all I could see was their back, neck, and heads. The next day, my brother-in-law came out and we walked back where I saw this thing. When I looked back towards the house, I couldn't see the red quad or snowmobiles at all. I saw no clear footprints out there. There were lots of trails to the grass that could have been made by anything. When this thing ran across the field, it was slightly leaning forward. It had to have been at least seven or eight feet tall in order for me to see its entire upper body over the grass. The next day when I showed up, I couldn't get in the house because the alarm had been triggered. I called the homeowner and he said that something triggered in the basement door alarm and the basement window alarm that same night. He had to leave in a hurry and forgot to reset the alarm. I thought that was very interesting, but I did not tell him what I had seen the morning before. It was in the fall of 2006. We were camping in the Volga River Recreational Area in Fayette, Iowa. It was myself and five other friends. We were sitting around the campfire. I'm going to have to say it was around 11.30 p.m. There was a campsite farther down from us with a husband and a wife. They also were sitting by the fire. My friends and I decided to take a walk about the campsite. There is an open field along the road and the campsite. 
Josh and I decided to sit there to see if we could call in some coyotes that night because the moon was full that night, making it easy to see. The rest of the guys went back to the campsite. Josh and I went and sat along the side of the field. We were sitting there, making the sound of a dying rabbit. The field is border with large trees and bushes. After about five to 10 minutes, we see a large person step out onto a little hill at the edge of the trees off to our left. We had a tall friend with us, so started saying to the person, Haha, Mike, very funny. Gestures of that sort, and that person didn't move nor speak. All we could see was its upper torso and its eye color, and I can't recall the exact color. So we ran back to the campsite to make sure it wasn't just our friends spooking us. And sure enough, they were all there. Josh and I grabbed a shotgun that I had brung for safety, and when we got back to the spot, the person was gone. We were both very frightened by this, and we ran back to the campsite, told everyone what we had heard, but nobody believed us. Later that night, I saw it again. This time it was in the woods, across from our campsite, just on the edge of the woods. The moonlight was bright, and this time I called everyone to come look over. And this time, Mike, Josh, and me all saw a very large black shadow across the road, moving towards the first spot we had just seen it. After the incident, I really had no idea what this was. It was very large, like a man, probably about eight feet tall, and I could tell it had its back to us, and it was black in color. I also saw eyes, and that is all I can recall from the incident. Hearts were definitely racing at the time. I was riding in the rear seat of a car with three others, all college students. We all lived same house in Fayette. It was a Friday night. Weather called for heavy snow overnight. We all were from the same area, about 25 miles away, decided to head there for a weekend or would be snowed in at Fayette by morning. We headed south in my brother's car. There was four inches of snow on the road, so we were going slow about 25 miles an hour. I was leaning to the center of rear seat to see out front. I saw something moving in field up ahead, just in headlight range, about 200 feet ahead. It was big and moving towards the road. I hollered, what the hell's that? And elbowed Al, who was sleeping next to me. My brother let off gas as we rolled on. We all watched as the creature never broke stride, stepped over a fence at least 40 inches high into a ditch, across the ditch, up onto the road shoulder, to center road, to other shoulder, across ditch, over another 40 inch high fence, going into darkness as we passed by. It passed in front of us, from right to left, about 50 feet away, when it was center of road. It was big, at least 8 feet tall, covered from coned head to feet with dark brown hair. It had a barrel shaped body with long arms and legs. It just walked like a human, taking long strides and swinging its arms. It crossed an angle from northwest to southeast, never turning to look at us, so we did not see its face. After passing, all were in shock, and someone said, let's stop to go look out for it. A big no was the response, and we went on our way. I like to go to Glotch Park and watch the Eagles. I used to stand in the middle of the bridge for a cigarette before I went home from work. I had done this a few days in a row, and that day I got out of my truck and felt like I shouldn't be there. As I walked to the middle of the bridge, I felt very uneasy. I lit my cigarette and stared out over the river. I felt like I was being watched, and I started to get scared. It was coming from the other side of the bridge on the right-hand side. Whatever it was, I knew that it was not human nor an animal, and it was a big male. I felt like he was just curious as to why I went there every day to the same spot and just wanted to watch what I was up to. I looked around and could not see anything. I built up my courage, looked down and started walking slowly to the other side of the bridge. As I started walking, I heard a big crash into the river and saw a huge log floating down. Then I heard a low huff, like someone letting out the air 
through their nose in frustration, with a little noise from the throat. The log had dried vegetation on it, so I knew it was laying on the forest floor. I don't know how many pounds it was, but it was huge. The biggest guy I know wouldn't have been able to throw this thing in the river with little to no effort. I looked to where it came from and saw nothing. I slowly turned around and walked slowly back to my truck. I wanted to run, but I didn't want it to run after me if I ran. I got into my truck and took off. I was scared and shaken. I haven't been out on that bridge by myself ever since. Me and five friends were walking in the woods at night on April 2nd this year, and we saw something pretty big and real thick and furry crouching behind a bush that was in between two trees. He had his hands on the tree and poked up to look at us. We had a video camera with us at the time, but it does not show the creature. The reason we had the camera with us was because the, all the dogs in our town were going crazy the last few days and we had heard odd noises coming from down in those woods, which were right alongside the Des Moines River. We got extremely scared at the sight of this thing and took off running right after we flipped the camera light on to try to get it on tape. The next morning we went down to the same spot to try and find some evidence. We found nothing really important there, except some broken twigs and whatnot. However, a little ways away we found a large femur bone either from a cow or a human. It was much too big to be a deer and wasn't a horse. This led us to dig around and we found 22 more bones. We also noticed a bunch of fur around the area, like rabbit or something. About a week later, we went back during the day because we were scared of at night and found a deer dead with its rear bit completely off, shredded 